to kick us off, Kyle. Prey stars Amber Mid Thunder, Dane Del Ligro, and Dakota Beavers. Um, directed by Dan Trackenberg, which his last project was Clover Ten Cloverfield Lane. Do you remember that one? Yeah. Did you watch it? Okay. Yeah, dude. Ten yeah. Cloverfield Lane, like, is fucked up. That was really fucked up. I still remember just regular Cloverfield. Yeah. The found footage film. Oof. See, I watched Cloverfield probably like five years later, and then the oh. sequel came out, and I was, and I watched the sequel. I was like, this has nothing to do with the original. It's unrelated. I know, but it was so, it was so good and mm. so grounded and awesome with John Goodman and Mary Elizabeth Winstead, or Ian McGregor's wife. Oh, really? I didn't <laughs> yeah, know they got married. Oh, did you know that? That's what funny. They, I, a that? few years ago. Oh. I think they met on Birds of Prey set, which is kind of funny because he was black mask in that. Oh yeah, he was in that movie. Yeah. But yeah, after seeing 10 Cloverfield Lane, I was like blown away by his directing, just that movie in general. And I was very excited to see where he would go next. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if he took a little break or if this movie just took a long time. Um, but yeah, he dropped this movie this year. Really cool. Yeah, it's pretty good. I, like I said, 10 Cloverfield Lane was really different from what I just seen, like comparing it to Prey now. Like, like you said, he probably did take like that big break in between because... When did that come out? Probably 2016 or so? The Predator movie? No, the um, 10 Cloverfield Lane. I think so. Something like, yeah, I think it was 2016. Mm -hmm. And I think that was also the same year the last Predator movie came out as well. Ironic. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he also directed a Black Mirror episode. Which one? Oh, it's called Playtest. Oh, with that. Wyatt Russell. Yeah. As yeah. well as Hannah John Kamen. I think that's her name. Okay. Also known as Ghost from oh. Ant Man and Wasp, as well as John Walker from, yeah, yeah you know, yeah. <laughs> Captain America and Winter Soldier. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they for, I didn't realize that. I actually liked Playtest. Yeah, it was a good one. Yeah, I mean, per usual, Black Black Mirror. That was a. I I thought that one was sad. It is when sad. They, yeah. Like he was killed at the end, and they're like, "Oh wow, his last word was him screaming for his mom." And they're like, "Okay, bring in the next one." I was like. Yeah, they're uh, like, cause they're, it's literally just try, they're trying to like get some players to like actually work with the with the machine. I think. Yeah. And if it doesn't work, then they just die, and then they just move yeah, on. Very sad. But it was really cool, like an idea of like VR being very realistic and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was a ton of fun. But yeah, he directed that episode. Yeah. So which is also one of a greater, a better episodes in my opinion as well. That's true. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he. I think he's been working on this movie for about six years or so which really? has been roughly like the time period between 10 cloverfield lane as well as this one. Oh, okay um but yeah nice crisp hour and 39 minute film mm -hmm. very quick quick and to watch yeah i liked it yeah what'd you think i thought it was good um again this was a prequel to all the other predator movies it was really nice to see that it was actually adapted to focus on like the native american culture as well really focus on that Whereas, you know, all the other Predator movies are just regular people, essentially. Mm -hmm. Especially the first one with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's ironic because that movie also has, like, uh, Shane Black. Oh. He was a character in that movie. Or he played a character in that movie. And then he directed the last Predator movie. Really? And he also directed Iron Man 3. Oh. But yeah, he played in the first predator movie as like a character Makes he sense. was killed i'm pretty sure probably per, per usual yeah because you know i i think just any like predator i mean i hate to say it i mean there is like kind of a formula you kind of can see with it it's just predator kill, pretty much killing people that he runs into yeah you know what i mean <laughs> yeah i mean like I mean, so is like every godzilla movie yeah and so is every and other movie like Word marvel of movie exactly so like i'm not hating it it's just it's a like formula. It's, it's a formula that it's stuck with and you can't really change it you could probably change minor, tiny things with, like, those type of movies, but, like... See, I thought this formula was done so much better, though. Yeah. Because was, the story was grounded. Mm -hmm. You know, the last movie... I don't think you ever saw it. No. I did. The last movie involved, with, like, hybrid predators, like, dog predators. Oh. Involved, like, an Iron Man suit. Like, it was just so... Iron so, Man suits? Yeah, it was, it was, it was so fucking This stupid. came out, like, in 2018. No, so get there. this. They send... There's like this spaceship that sends something to fight the predators. Yeah. And it's a suit. And then it forms onto someone like an Iron Man suit. And then it's like an Iron Predator. Stupidest thing in the world. So dumb. Hated it. I'm not sure if you're seeing my face. Yeah, yeah. Your face says it all. You're like, 
What? Yeah, yeah no. <laughs> is, it, is it the director of freaking Iron Man that's in this thing? No. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'm like, exactly. why would he need to it, have it? If... No questions. Just just move, erase it from your head and move on. Yeah, okay. Um, but that movie just involved, like, we're just on a bigger scale. But this was so grounded. It mm-hmm. felt so personal. You know, Amber Mind Thunder, I thought she did an excellent job at just per- purveying the idea of just growing and seeing what she wanted to become you know like right off the bat kicked off the idea of her not being a hunter you know she's you know that's what a man does Mm -hmm. a man does not not woman and but you know they didn't really focus on that aspect but more focus on the idea of her just not naive i think that may be a word not skilled enough Mm -hmm. you know she's not ready kind Mm -hmm. of thing and she kind of has to prove herself yeah she wants to still prove herself but like not to a big extent compared to like the actual people that are the hunters in the tribe yeah yeah so you know a lot of a lot of movies would focus on the idea of like you know she's a woman Mm -hmm. she has to prove herself whereas in this movie like she's just like not as skilled so she also has to prove herself in that way and Mm -hmm. i thought that was done a little bit differently yeah especially what's this where it's being taking place back in like i think the 1700s especially you know like you said it's mainly the men are being the hunters of mm-hmm. the tribe just to gather the food to provide for their families for the tribe themselves that are there being raised grown up in and then the women are pretty much there it's just what make them make the stuff cook the food take care of the children that are heal. there heal everyone essentially it's at least showing there's some development with her character in this movie yeah i think it's funny how she goes from a lion to the fucking predator yeah that's a big <laughs> jump like i love it though no mm-hmm. it's great though so she uses her her skills from being like a more like a gatherer versus a hunter that's true yeah. you know the orange flower like mm-hmm. that saved that was a great um thing added to the story that kind of blended the idea of like uh was it heat radiation so mm-hmm. um i thought that was done awesome you know that's something she learned from her mom uh, yeah or, or the mother figure i think it was mm-hmm. um something the hunters would have never like learned themselves so no. i think it's very funny and then maybe not so much funny but very smart and it makes the character actually seem smart as well it also makes her more humble and yeah as well. like she doesn't always have to go at it with an axe like she's mm-hmm. using her brain yeah she's using her brain versus her bronze mm-hmm. you know like you know it's like mind over matter essentially definitely you know then that's what amber or er, Nara was especially able to do throughout this whole movie, especially now fighting a freaking predator compared to a, the mountain lion <laughs> or the grizzly bear before that. Yeah, so dude, that grizzly bear. Ooh, mm-hmm. I was kind of scared during that scene. Yeah, that was. But you see the fucking predator lift it up and gut it gut open it and let the blood drain down on him. I'm like, oh, like badass. I was like, what the fuck? Awesome. <laughs> yeah, whole, I, that was like, what the hell? <laughs> that shit. I thought this was like the best predator movie since the original mm. i don't know how many you've seen i've seen i think four out of the five i don't th- i don't remember ever seeing the second one i see um i saw the third one which was kind of i thought the third one had a great idea mm-hmm. um involved taking humans kidnapping them and then dropping them on a planet where the predators like hunt them down oh, as like a game okay. kind of thing mm-hmm. um fourth one brought the predators back to earth and mm-hmm. then we got this one um but yeah, just back to the basics, you know, very, very kind of personal story, like I mentioned, very simple. Mm-hmm. Um, but the character, Amber Naru, is, is who like drives the story. You know, mm-hmm. you want to see her win. You want to see her become that hunter to because it's a rite of passage, you know. Yeah. Um, so I think that was really clever and a lot of fun. And she like like we mentioned earlier, she was just very smart. You know, she mm-hmm. strategized how to fucking kill this predator in the end. You said it was predictable. I think it was. Only like Ugh. I could be wrong on some stuff, but like one thing, like there was that one scene in the movie where she gets trapped in that mud bog yeah. quicksand type of thing. Like, okay, what was that coincidental thing where she was there in that mud bog? And then come later, obviously, she uses the mud bog to trap the predator in it. You know, like, it's not like I'm hating the movie. It's just funny that that was being introduced again because that has been used in somewhat other movies. Not just with Predator, but, like, where they, a familiar scene comes back into play at the finale. Does that kind of make sense? No, yeah. It's definitely not something new or mm-hmm. fresh. I like to think of it like this. You know, she take it as a moment you know, I was sweating bullets. Yeah, no, it was when she was she was just alone with it when there was oh, no yeah. predator. Mm-hmm. And I think 
the director can make you like that tense and uncomfortable just uh, with just one character mm-hmm. the protagonist mm-hmm. i think that's like hats off to you like i, I felt that scene was awesome mm-hmm. i was getting very nervous during it and i hate got me, i'm claustrophobic like mm-hmm. that that like made me really freak out of course like a scene gets brought back later mm-hmm. um i just think it was a little bit more clever than like past movies or just movies in general because she kind of used her wit and her brain yeah. to you know trap him in the end mm-hmm. and you know she knew she wasn't going to ever beat him by like bronze going, yeah exactly just by physically fighting by full him. force or anything like mm-hmm. that so she kind of she had to outsmart him which yeah. i think and she did a great job at. no she definitely did for sure that was the way the better smarter method in order to kill predator because you can't really rely on strength alone and you have to rely on your brain power yeah. and rely on like strategic strategy as well on top of that just to figure out how to kill this damn monster Mm -hmm. you know and that's the same i mean again i mean not hating on the predator movies it's kind of the same thing with other monster movies you need to find strategy in order to yeah but here's the thing sometimes it doesn't always happen like that sometimes the movies i'll say that so like think about it like this godzilla versus Mm khan they just out like that was physical that was physical fighting every godzilla movie is pretty much physical every marvel movie is out physical like very rarely do they ever just like outsmart them and then mm-hmm. they kind of side away from the fight you know like look at wandavision for example mm-hmm. that's a movie where it just involved her being smart and being clever and yeah. outsmarting her enemy i mean with thanos it was kind of both because yeah. he does use both physical and mentality his, yeah. and his brain power to do whatever he wanted to do to achieve his goal in life yeah mm-hmm. so i just think I think for the most part, like these kinds of movies do go more like full force, like trying, mm-hmm. you know, or discovering something like a power that you never had before. And then you're stronger than the enemy. Whereas mm-hmm. like this one, she knew she was never going to beat him. She mm-hmm. was never strong enough. Um, and she always, she cut, she had to outsmart him. Yeah. What'd you think of the, like, uh, the landscape in this movie? Oh, it was beautiful for sure. Love oh the, cin- the cinematography <laughs> throughout just her walking, yeah, her walking through the forest, walking through the mountains. I think this was taking place in Colorado or something. Maybe it's like yeah. gr- uh, Great Plains. The Great right? Plains. So yeah. I think that covers like North Dakota, Colorado area, Montana, yeah. maybe mm-hmm. around that kind of vicinity area. So all of those shots were beautifully mastered. I wish I had a really cool. Yeah, if this was like an IMAX, if it was in the movie theaters, obviously it would be beautiful seeing. Like it. Sad. Yeah, because like me watching it on my old like thirty-two inch TV because I'm a poor college student. Like I didn't really get to like embrace the beautifulness of the cinematography from filming those like outdoorsy shots they did a lot of drone shots I they did if you yeah. noticed that at mm-hmm. all but yeah it was just a, so much fun i the scenery itself just made made it feel like you were so immersive mm-hmm. and just the way they're walking in the woods you're like you know i remember walking in the woods like when i was a kid like i i, I could feel this exact thing you know i can imagine them being here and just or like right there at the scene yeah exactly mm-hmm. i just felt like it was so immersive mm-hmm. um you mentioned movie theater though are you mad this movie wasn't in theaters Yes and no. I guess, um, yes, because like I said, it wasn't, you're not able to express that whole cinematography of, especially just the landscaping of like the movies of where the movie takes place. Mm -hmm. But I guess, you know, the thing was a lot of it was in dark, like, you know, the whole, some of the fight scenes, but like, you know, I feel like any fight scene is always going to be in the dark regardless. So I'm like half and half with it being not just going straight to streaming versus they should have just went. To movie theaters if that kind of makes sense so this movie was one of the projects that disney acquired from the 21st century fox merger oh, a few okay. years ago what was another one like free guy i think for sure that was another one of course that one came out way before this mm-hmm. um that went to theaters though yeah. yeah that did go to theaters mm-hmm. um but i also think they started promoting it before the merger oh i see um so that's kind of why and it, it kind of makes me sad that like disney acquired a movie like this and they ironically just, also since it's horror and yeah it's i know <laughs> and they just pushed it to stream it mm-hmm. like it makes me mad like we are in a society mm-hmm. <laughs> we're in a society where it's all superhero movies mm-hmm. and now you have something that's very like grounded yes it's like the typical monster movie but it's fresh by taking it to a different time period mm-hmm. different century different landscapes and everything like that and the adaptation and everything involved with that kind of type of movie Mm -hmm. and they just threw it on hulu yeah Uh, hulu on top of it as well like 
Yeah. I guess it makes sense because well, they Hulu own Hulu. Hulu. Yeah, you know Hulu that? and yeah, Disney. That's, that's why it went to Hulu is because they owned it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just think they could have... If this went to theaters, easily two to three hundred million. They would have made some money. Easily. Yeah. So Predator back in 2016, when that came out, it made 160 million worldwide. Mm. Uh, which was the highest gross in Predator movie. Can you imagine what this movie would have made? Oh, it a lot more, yeah. Because it's the highest streamed like project on Hulu mm-hmm. ever. Mm. Like including all of their TV shows and other movies that they have. Oh, really? Yeah, so, like, this movie had such a big buzz behind it, Mm -hmm. and it would have made a good amount of money, I think, for sure. It would have... They just kind of kicked themselves in the ass, essentially, for not doing it. It just makes me mad. Yeah, (laughs) it's just stupid, because, like, they could have had this opportunity to just release it in theaters, even just for, like, a short amount of time, and yet... It doesn't like i'm just thinking now like gray man from on netflix <laughs> gray man oh yeah. yeah yeah that had even a short release like, yeah and it was it was a netflix original netflix yeah. original and it was on theaters as well for a couple days yeah and <laughs> but they probably still made money regardless from doing theater release and netflix release mm-hmm. but like i think it would have been the same thing if they did it with prey where they did a theater release and a streaming release at the same time i hope this movie comes out on blu-ray because i would buy it mm. i think that'd be really cool are people even it. using blu-rays though yeah i do bitch yeah no, you're old <laughs> i'm physical media for days okay. streaming sucks man the quad okay you're not wrong small though. rant yeah. quality quality of streaming is not there compared to physical media you're not wrong and yeah. the amount of times my streaming has to reload or stops for half a second mm-hmm. takes me out of the movie and i hate it. that's true <laughs> you're not wrong with that like i miss and like, i always get it so much with hulu i honestly mm-hmm. ironically enough i didn't get it with this movie but mm-hmm. everything else i'm on hulu like master chef or some other stuff like it always freezes up really i don't know that happens with my shit also like i'm trying to stream like my tv shows like you say master chef some personal tv shows i watched anime so on and so forth mm-hmm. like it delays for no reason and i'm like my wi-fi is good exactly and I'm like, it's what? just it's just streaming. It's the streaming shit, and I'm like, what the fuck, man? And the like, quality isn't always the yeah. best. I mean, Disney Plus, I think, revolutionized the idea of like dropping IMAX level ratios mm. on streaming. I think that's a brilliant idea. But also, you have to have the TV t- capacity exactly. to have that, though. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Like, can you ima- ma- imagine the amount of service? servers they need just to run an imax yeah. movie because mm-hmm. oh i could God. just know like i know like back at my parents house we have an 81 inch tv yeah home. so it probably looks gorgeous oh it's yeah, beautiful yeah. <laughs> imagine watching prey on that movie well, probably, my dad probably did to yeah. be honest <laughs> i'll ask him later <laughs> oh man i feel like it's just i miss like the dvd experience i remember as a kid just going to like family video blockbuster yeah dude family video mm-hmm. i loved family video that's Me where too, i bought yeah. all my dvds all yeah. my blu-rays because you know, after a few weeks, they had too much in stock, and they would mm. sell them at really cheap prices. Oh, yeah, you're right, yeah. And I would buy a hell out of them. Mm. And COVID killed the family video. It did. It makes me so sad. Yeah. Because there were so many around here that mm. I would go to. It was like my, my oh, house also. Oh, man. You know how many I passed? Oh, even yeah. on one in There's our one town, the, yeah. in our old college town. There's even one like right by where we live now. I know, exactly. <laughs> right by the Walgreens. so mad. Yeah, it's so sad because I used to go to the family videos just to get, like, not even video, okay, movies, so, but video games. Yeah, so back in the day, they you show me a report card. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you, if you, you get, that, like, five and, A's or whatever. Yeah, every A is, like, a free video game for, yeah. like, five nights. Mm-hmm. And I was like, hell yeah, like, that's what I did in the summers, man. Oh, that's my what God. Motiv- motivated me during my spring semester. Not oh. my fall, but the spring semester to get like straight A's in college A's, school yeah. shit my ass was, was dumb so <laughs> my ass was dumb i didn't get straight A's shit. <laughs> <laughs> i was a dumb ass in high school <laughs> pharmacy school baby Yay. let's go C's good degrees. future doctors <laughs> exactly um the action in this movie was mm-hmm. awesome one scene that really like blew me away was her killing the frenchman when she oh, got yeah. back on the cam mm-hmm. taking her um tomahawk with the leash and watching her go back and forth yeah, the, boop, boop. insane. Like a boomerang and, uh, kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, exactly. And did you the camera work with that scene? Yeah. Chef's kiss. Like it was so cool. fucking cool. Mm-hmm. And to see like later on the predator like gut the Frenchman. Oh, that was F oh, to be honest. Oh my god. <laughs> Has it been done though also in other people? No, not to okay, yes, it's obviously been done, but like the way <laughs> like this action was way more like ed- hyped up and way more more modern. Time. Well, yes, of course, modern, but more intense than any other Predator mm. movie that I've seen in the past. I see. Okay. 
so yeah it was just way it was just on a new level mm. like the killings were way more more advanced. graphic yeah not graphic it's always been graphic but just more i don't know it's, you can see as like john wick movies come out yeah other studios are starting to adapt that kind of fight style mm -hmm. where it's so focused on camera work and you feel every punch mm -hmm. and you know you feel the emotion of yeah. everything i mean look at extraction i don't know if you've seen that on netflix that one, that's a really intense action movie and that does a really good job at like modern action so like just to see the predator destroy him like taking a hatchet yeah. and just gutting him that, that taking bit, the shield and chop, yeah, chop into someone's heads off like oh my shit, gosh yeah. it's awesome mm -hmm. were you mad that we never got title subtitles for the frenchman like no it was kind of dumb and that's what kind of made me mad a little bit like why did it, we couldn't read hear what the french people were saying i thought it was funny like i mean also we had an idea i have a little like not a rant but a kind of weird thing about it with the dialogue throughout this whole movie it was taking place in native america right but like yeah it was a lot of english and a lot of the english that i feel like we hear in today's world yeah compared to like we could have heard it in native american language throughout they obviously did throw in some american like Dial or dialogue Definitely. in some scenes but like even if it was a movie in all native american possibly or even a good more with it at least it feel like it would have been more authentic in my opinion yeah so um in our tickets for two episode we talked a little bit about prey and mm -hmm. santi mentioned that the dialogue in this movie just felt very modern yeah and you know compared to something like he said the northman mm -hmm. I, I haven't seen the northman yes they speak probably english but like it's I feel like it's, it's more right though that they spoke English. Yeah, but like in a different tone, more and tone style and, yeah. is just more accurate to the time period mm -hmm. versus like now. Yeah, I feel like if the time period at this time was, if the English or whatever was fixed, affixed to that time period, it would have worked out a lot better. Yeah, is no, another way. I, I agree. I think the dialogue was weird. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's just the way they talked. And it felt modern, and it doesn't yeah, it make felt, me feel right. It took right. you out of the film a little bit. It did. I will agree to that one. You mm -hmm. know, he, opening scene of her and her brother, and this is the first word said in the movie. Mm -hmm. He just looks at her and talks normal. I'm like, I'm the like, what fuck? the hell is this? They're <laughs> like, it's like they're bantering, like they're bantering with each other. I'm yeah, like, I was like, um, what? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, is this actually like Native America, yes. or is it Native America in a different like multiverse? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so yes. I agree with you. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, there's not a whole lot of dialogue though in this movie. Yeah, like, I'm more. A lot of it is focused on the action or a lot of the just killings, quiet scenes. You know, mm -hmm. there's like half the movie she's on her own, so like she ain't talking to herself. Yeah, talks to the dog uh, a little bit, which right, is yeah. kind of funny. I know, cute dog though. He definitely. Predator design was sick in this movie with mm -hmm. the bone mask. Yeah, I think this was one of the better predators predator designs in all the movies like it was just so cool i don't know if you've seen the like behind the scenes the stuff. visual effects stuff oh like my yeah. god absolutely mm -hmm. awesome i love the predator okay mm -hmm. the amount of prints and fan art that you have with them yeah oh. awesome like i probably have three prints upstairs in my room i see right now of artists like doing different predator designs and stuff so that this one is so cool and mm -hmm. i absolutely love it like he's just Oh, so fucking mm -hmm. awesome. Because, like, I'm trying to think. This was... I mean, I read there was... The previous Predator movies were all just CGI. Yeah. But this one was actually an actor in a Predator, like, suit or whatever. Plus CGI. Yeah. So, I don't think... I think with the helmet, it was more prosthetic. Yeah. And, of course, the original. Mm -hmm. Um, But kind of moving past, like, I think it was, like, three and four have been mostly CGI based. Yeah, yeah. Of course, this one had CGI moments as well. But, mm -hmm. like... Just to see the behind the scenes of like the predator and then with his mask off as well, mm -hmm. um, very unique. I, I was gonna say like I think it's good that it was a, a good mix using with predator having both CGI and mm -hmm. with a little bit of actual like prosthetics with the person playing p actor, I mean whoever the actor is for predator. I think it's a good mix with it. Yeah, the CGI kind of was weird with it the was, animals. Yeah. I mm -hmm. will admit that as well. But it was good for the predator. Yeah. But like all the animals. Yeah. It was kind of mad with it, but at least they put more money or more focus on the predator. Yeah, they definitely the put more focus on the predator, which exactly. is probably what you want to do in a predator movie. <laughs> exactly. You rather push towards the main focus of the movie versus like the side stuff, but I like that it's not a perfect world. I yeah. like that sequence where you see like this uh like the rat and then you see the snake kill a rat. Yeah. And then you see this 
predator killed the snake. Yeah, it's like a um, a food chain. Kind a food of chain. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely. what it's called. Mm-hmm. So I thought that was cool. Yeah, it was just I love his design. I can't wait for a future Comic Con where I just see all of his like designs. Like, oh, you yeah. haven't seen any of them? No, like no, like fan arts, like oh. artists doing all this stuff so they can make prints and stuff. So oh, I'm definitely gonna like november here mm-hmm. it comes Let's yeah go. I, was gonna, I mean i thought you meant like seeing like a cosplayer of predator that'd be fucking awesome oh i've seen oh some. my god i saw someone in person i would die I would oh die. oh i've seen so many <laughs> yeah yeah they're so dead. like in uh what was it when i was in florida during bike week um a few years back in daytona there was this guy on a bike and he had a predator helmet as oh, really? his biker helmet That's and cool. had the dreads and everything nice. he was just riding out his bike i was like this is awesome mm. i love this so, would you like to see a sequel, Kyle? I would definitely want to see a sequel. I think a sequel for sure should happen. Or, I think we talked about this in um, the Tickets for Two yes. podcast, where I think it was Santi or someone mentioned that we should do, they should do Predator if it was based in feudal Japan. Yeah. That I would like fucking 11, love. 11th century kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, with samurais and all that crap. Fuck, yes. I'll watch it immediately. I think it's a very unique idea to take, you know, such a common enemy like Predator and just mm-hmm. throwing him in a different timeline. Yeah. And just seeing him adapt. I mean, in this movie, you saw him adapt a little bit. You know, um, the Frenchman netted him. You, did you notice that? Oh, and yeah. He broke the net, but mm-hmm. then... He had his own net yeah, and, and then he had his own guy or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Like, there's just so little things. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it would be so cool to just see, like... Different timelines yeah, of Predator Yeah, different being Predators, you know. I can imagine a predator in Egypt. That'd be cool. That'd yeah. be awesome. During so, Pharaoh times. Yeah, and stuff. exactly. So mm-hmm. they can, they can have something special on their hands with this, mm-hmm. and I just hope like no other studios or other franchises like kind of exploit this idea and they kind of let predators kind of move predator franchise move forward with this. Mm-hmm. I'm but hoping think, it doesn't get like oversaturated though on top of it as yeah, well. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's also your work. But I think that did you see the post credit scenes of this? Yeah, movie? I did. I saw like the cave art thing. Yeah. And it showed more of the predator, predator ships yeah. coming into yeah, Native so America. I think that'd be a cool idea to see it kind mm-hmm. of move forward, but half her clan was killed, so what's like, You can't really what do you adapt do? to do it you, really. Do, do they run into a new clan kind mm-hmm. of thing? I don't know. A lot of people are suggesting Amber Mid Thunder to play X twenty three in the MCU. X twenty three is from Logan with the two two oh, okay. prongs. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, so I think that'd be a badass. That makes sense. People, people yeah. are fan casting her because um, she just did a great job of just playing this badass warrior. And I think that's a funny ca- casting, and it'll be interesting. Ironic, to do. also. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> One big fun fact for this movie: it was shot in two languages. Comanche as well as English. Mm. So, and this is also the only movie that ever does um, a dubbed for Comanche language. Like, this is the first ever movie and only ever movie to exist to do this. That's really cool. So, Native American language right there. So, it's really cool. They did film scenes in Comanche. Mm -hmm. um, But, of course, there are other scenes where... Like, they didn't, and they kind of had to, like, dub that in a little bit. So, I'm sure the, like, mouthing wouldn't be... Uh, they're matching up a lot, but yeah. you can watch this on Hulu and Com- on Hulu and Command. Oh, you can switch to language. Yeah. To- oh, that's so cool. Nice. I think that's really cool, and it yep. just plays a lot of homage mm-hmm. back to that culture and timeline. And I yeah. really appreciate that. Nice respect to them as well. Definitely, mm-hmm. definitely. So, Kyle, what would you give this movie out of ten? Uh, I would probably rate this probably seven and a half, seven and a half or eight. Yeah. Okay. That's, That's good for you. Yeah. That's good for you. Only uh, because, like, I know for you, you have more, like, passion with yeah, the yeah, Predator with the movies. Yeah, the franchise and everything. You love the yeah. franchise and all that, so I understand, like, if you have more respect with it, I guess. Yeah. For me, like, this is, I mean, I've seen the first one with Arnold Schwarzenegger probably, like, years ago. And, like, I haven't watched any of the ones in between. So, watching Prey, it's, like, a different type of experience for me. But it was still really cool. We both have very, like, I would say unique tastes. Like... You probably you definitely resonate uh, connected more with Bullet Train. Yeah, that's where I connected more with this. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's interesting. I like the the um, the differences yeah, that we have. The differences and the, the chemistry we have. Yeah, when we talk about one another. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I think for sure I'd give this movie a nine out of ten. Yes, it's not the perfect perfect movie. Great B movie. Quick just, watch also. What's it? Quick watch. Yeah, quick watch. Very fast, and it's just a fun time. Mm-hmm. I had a blast with it. Love the action. Love the characters. Would love to see a sequel, and I hope, I hope they bring back Dan Trackenberg.